Hello, beautiful creative people. Welcome to howtoartjournal.com. I'm your creative tour guide and fellow art journal lover, Kyla Givehand. Today I chat with Mistel about her creative journey and the power of the art journal. Mistel began teaching herself to paint in 2008 and never looked back. She's a mixed media artist who uses painting as a way to process the world and document how she is being unmade and remade. She's the co-creator of Community Thrive, an online space for art, play, and discovery. She's also one of the head chefs running the three-month online course called Soul Food, starting in February 2015. You can learn more about Mistel and her artwork at mistel.com. Thanks for joining us. Welcome, Mistel. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm really honored to have you here, to have you be a part of this, to expose you to my community. I've been following you for a long time, so I'm a huge fan. Um, and I'm just really excited to be able to have a conversation with you and share with folks how you and your creative process and your creative journey and what all of that looks like. I think um, you're a real inspiration to a lot of people. So I think um, we're honored and we're, you know, very happy to have you on howtoartjournal.com. So thank you. Yay! Thank <laughs> you so much. This, okay. It's so affirming and encouraging mm-hmm. to um, just to, for people to know that you're there mm-hmm. and um, your words encourage me and keep me creating as well. So thank you very much. Awesome. Yay. Yay. Okay, so I'm just going to jump right in and start okay. asking you questions because I'm going to give people tons of links and ways to find you and it'll be awesome. So we're just going to jump right in. Okay. All right, so I have to start by asking you, what brought you to art journaling? What made you start journaling um, or arting in a journal? Okay, um, I think it was really just that I saw so many other people online doing it and I wanted to know what it was about. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually started painting before I started art journaling Mm. and I didn't really get the the difference until Mm -hmm. like maybe the last two years Mm -hmm. Um, because a lot of my process is the same Mm. um, whether I'm painting or journaling but with the journal I feel a different kind of freedom Mm. than I do when I'm painting to sell yeah so yeah yeah no that's awesome I'm glad that you said the word process because I like to ask people what their creative process is like and the word freedom I think if you're an artist who sells your art there's absolutely like a different level of um, expectation around your art when you're in a journal so can you tell us a little bit about what your process looks like when you either way on canvas or in your art journal like what does that process look like for you how do you start and how do you keep going okay um, it definitely is always um, not morphing, but changing and growing because that's what we do as people. So I try to first of all give myself the freedom to just explore. Mm. Every new painting is new. It isn't. Um, I'm not trying to do something I've done before. It's mm. always very um, explorative, yeah. and um, I will start with. I love collage, so mm. and not in the traditional sense. I don't do collage art, right. which that's a whole other wonderful thing that I'm not good at. <laughs> I like to glue and cut and tear paper and put mm. it down and then add color, um, paint and other color media. Mm. Um, so I just gather like my favorite stuff and just start playing. It really is always about playing yeah. for me. Yeah, no, I love that. Play. I think uh, one of our other interviewees, uh, Susan, talked about that as well. She said play is sort of the way that she comes. It's like freedom, your child, your inner child being released and allowed to play. Um, So, yeah, that's awesome. So uh, this wasn't sort of one of the questions I um, told you I was going to ask you, but I'm curious um, when you say that you come to when when you you say you come to the art journal or you come to your creative process um around playing and i'm i'm wondering well let me be more specific here here's what i really want to ask okay you have a very specific style it is very noticeable like if i saw five paintings lined up i would be able to pick the one that was yours um because it's very unique and very distinct 
has it always been that way? How, or, and if it hasn't, did you, how did you develop your own? I mean, cause it's a signature style, your women, your girls, the people, the things that you paint are very much, there's no mistake in it. It doesn't look like anybody else's work. Um, and that's one of the things that is like so intriguing about you. So how do you, how did you develop a style? It was lots of playing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, well, I have to mention Yann. Okay. Um, she, I did a coaching course with her in 2009, I think. Mm. And um, the one thing she told me is if you lose the joy, if you lose your desire to come to your art space and just play, mm -hmm. then eventually it will all become about money or about the business and you're, you're going to lose the drive for it. Yeah. So I took her seriously and I, it's a blast every time I sit <laughs> to create. Um, and so the other thing that she challenged me to do is to not just, um, you know how when you see art that you love, mm -hmm. you, you can sort of obsess over it <laughs> and then what you create starts looking like that, mm -hmm. which is totally fine because everybody needs a place to start. Right. But at right. some point, um, her, her encouragement was at some point you have to be able to dissect mm -hmm. the things about the art that you like and just play with individual elements mm -hmm. and that is how I started creating my own style which I didn't even know it was happening it wasn't <laughs> intentional right. you know it just it it was a result really from spending the time just messing around oh, you know wow. I, I don't know if that makes sense but that's really yes. what happened <laughs> yes no that absolutely makes sense and I, I love that you said it just happened it wasn't something you planned it wasn't intentional you played you listened to her advice which by the way is really good advice mm -hmm. um th that idea of like finding the, the elements of something you really like um because there are artists that i look at i watch and i'm like oh my god how did they do that that what there's this one thing that they'll do really well i'm like how did they do that one thing and i i hear you saying practice play repeat right so yes. yeah, yeah no thank you because that's um I think that's one of the things I always look at your art and I'm like, it's, it's not like anybody else's. There's, it's no mistaking it. It's, it's really very special. So, um, all right. So then let's, we talked about your creative process and what that looks like. And I'm wondering if you might tell us a little bit about what, what inspires the art that you do. Ooh, <laughs> um, the simplest word would just be life. Um, <laughs> I am well, I was telling you earlier that I'm kind of shy, mm -hmm. um, and it takes a while for me to to really say things that I want to say verbally, mm -hmm. um, or like person to person. Mm -hmm. um, I've always enjoyed writing. I can write my thoughts out very well, but when I started painting, I realized that something was happening. It's like an things that were on my mind would come out in the end of the painting even though I hadn't planned it. Oh, wow. So if I'm frustrated or happy with parenting, that comes out. <laughs> um, there are lots of houses in my work because I'm always thinking and praying about home. Hmm. Um, I have two boys uh, that we're raising and I want I want to raise men that are um, that are givers that they know how to love people yeah. and they're not um consumed by culture but they're really their own people yeah. you know so that those kinds of things are always on my mind marriage is another thing <laughs> even though i don't paint a lot of men uh -huh. you can sometimes see how uh -huh. marriage is going <laughs> based on the the looks of the the, the, uh, the looks that my characters have um <laughs> And then sometimes it's just stuff that's going on between me and God, stuff mm -hmm. I'm praying over, mm -hmm. stuff that I know I need to be working on mm -hmm. um, or surrendering, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, they all just have their unique ways of coming to the surface once the painting is done. Yeah. So yeah, yeah no, that's, thank that's you for just that. life. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, it's, um, I think a lot of people think you have to paint a certain thing or a certain way and I think it's important for folks to, to know just pull from your life um, there's there's a lot of richness in every person's life even if you're somebody who um, I'm very introverted I don't think people would believe that um, I'm not you, you called yourself shy like I don't think I'm shy but I am definitely an introvert I can stay in my house for two weeks and not yes. see another human and be yeah. perfectly fine with that 
yes. um, and I don't have like fits of rage like I need to see people I don't have that I'm very much um, internal I spend a lot of time in my head and yes. writing and so but my life is rich and full I still have a very full and rich life even if I don't leave my house for two weeks um, and so yeah just pull from pull from everyday life and living um, so what are your this is this is gonna seem like an odd jump like you know but we're just having a conversation so I want you to talk a little bit about what your favorite um, supplies are like what do you use to create what are your favorite okay. supplies and materials okay. tools anything that you want to share with us okay um my favorite paint uh, medium is acrylic. Mm -hmm. um, I love that you, I like heavy body acrylic mm -hmm. uh, because I like texture and so you can get a lot of texture with that particular type of acrylic paint. Right. Um, and then I love making marks and scribbling. Mm -hmm. So Prismacolor pencils, um, car and dosh crayons, mm -hmm. you know, any mark making tool. Um, this is, I don't know if you can see, this is my stylus. Oh, yes. I bought a stylus because of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love to um, scratch into, like, the um, the wax of the crayons. Mm -hmm. Like, when you put paint over the wax, you can dig back into it and uncover fun color. Yeah. Um, Oh, my favorite pencil, which you can't even see because it's just a little nub <laughs> now. Um, it's a 9XXB graphite pencil by General Pencil Company. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's just very dark and soft. Mm. And I use that for outlining because, again, I love scribbles. So I will scribble around my characters. Um, chalk pastel. <laughs> um I like, I'm looking at everything, um, I like the Adirondack um, alcohol inks, mm -hmm. um, the acrylic here, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> these um, acrylic inks, which oh, there's yeah. lots of different brands of these, but mm -hmm. they're all pretty comparable. Yeah. Um, yeah, so those are some of my favorites. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I love the, I don't know if you say Faber-Castell or Faber-Castell, yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. German maybe. I don't know. <laughs> uh, these are the uh, India ink pit pins. Oh, yeah. Love these. Yeah, those are nice. Um, yeah. yeah, so those are some of my favorites. So I will tell you, so the stylus and the heavy body acrylic, Mm -hmm. two things that I totally picked up from watching your videos and taking um, soul art which we're gonna talk about next and our soul food um, and so that stylus the first time I used it I was like oh my god this is so much fun <laughs> <laughs> it is yeah I was like look at what it's doing I don't know it was just such a it was such a new and interesting tool to use mm -hmm. and now I was like every time I'm like hmm what can I do next I pick up that stylus and I'll do something with it. So, and I don't think I think I was fearful of heavy body acrylics. Something about it made me believe it was intended for fine art. And I was like, I don't know if I should be. I'm. I'm. Am, have I? Do I have I earned the right to use that yet? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I watched a video with you, and you gave me permission to use it. So, um, thank you for that. Um, so I, I mentioned soul food, so I have to segue there because I want you to talk a little bit about the online classes that you teach. Um, I think I missed the last version of gut art, but I am patiently waiting for it to come back around. So talk a little bit about gut art, but then also um, definitely tell us about soul food because I know you guys are gearing up for um, the 2015 version. So yes yeah okay so gut art um, is one of my favorite classes um, I started teaching that one in 2009 shortly after I had the coaching time with YN mm -hmm. and um, gut art is about everything that I said earlier what I learned from YN and what I've learned from just playing um, as I've grown as an artist mm -hmm. um, I started it when this the playing process was new for me because I wanted to invite other um, novices, you know, to join me on that journey. And so in Gut Art, what we do is basically a big web field trip. Um, we visit different artists' websites. Sometimes they're painters, sometimes they're sculptors, mm -hmm. or anything in between. Mm -hmm. um, we look 
listen to poetry. We um, are inspired by dance. There's all different kinds of things that we look at. And um, in the class, my purpose is to help other people learn how to dissect the inspiration so that they're not stifled by the, the multitude of stuff that's out there. Mm -hmm. They're actually being really intentional about picking things apart and then, t and then taking those notes and messing around with it in their studio mm -hmm. apart from looking at the artist work. Right. So there's a separation, a mental separation so that they can just do their thing yeah. and yeah. not get so um, caught up in trying to produce art that they admire. Right. You right. Know? Okay. So, so, so similar to how you were able to come to your style. Yes. Awesome. I love that. And yeah. is that course on the horizon anytime soon when's the it next it is yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna be announcing the next section session in a couple of weeks Ooh. so okay. <laughs> yeah I'm excited all right so now tell us about this amazing collaborative experience um, called soul food which by the way brilliant name I looked at it and I was like I don't even need to read the rest I'm just taking it because it says soul food <laughs> so tell us a little yeah. bit about that okay um one of my good friends, Maisie, her name is Jeanette House, but mm -hmm. I call her Maisie. She's an artist from the UK. Mm -hmm. um, one day, she I posted some clean recipe, like healthy recipe that mm -hmm. I was um, having for lunch um, or a photo or something. I did that on Facebook, and she just commented, and she said, it would be so cool if you did a mixed media cookbook. Mm -hmm. And I'm like... I, love it. I don't think I want to do a cookbook, <laughs> but what about a class, mm. a, a class based on food? And then I invited her and Heather Santos, mm -hmm. who is my um, partner, I'm on my art site called Community Thrive. So the three of us collaborated together and um, the name Soul Food was, you know, birthed mm -hmm. and... Um, from there, with their brains involved, we really um, decided that we would like to focus on creative food mm -hmm. and just include food recipes as like a little bonus. Right. Um, but the point of the class is it's an, another type of discovery class, mm -hmm. just being able to um, take a peek inside other artists' studios and see what it um, and then take their inspiration and um, work it into your art space. Mm. Same same type of concept. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can tell you that even though I'm like super behind, I didn't finish this in the time frame that you all set. Either. Uh, <laughs> because there was so, I mean, there's so much. I've never, I have taken, okay, first of all, let me preface by saying I've taken a lot of online art classes um, over the last four or five years. And when I say a lot, I will, I'm afraid, I'm ashamed to say the number. So <laughs> many, so many. Some of them were free art classes. You know how people do the free class and the, um, but I've taken a lot of classes and I've actually taken several collaborative workshops. Okay. By far, this one was the most robust. It had the most lessons and the most, I mean, it was, I was like, wait, how is it possible that they have this many videos? Wow. <laughs> so it was really awesome to see it because you. of the time frame that you all gave us and the number of videos and not just, um, there was something about it. It was everyone gave a full lesson. Like it was a full, um, I don't know. I know you all were using the food metaphor, but I always felt like I was getting an entree. I never felt like I was giving getting a little appetizer. Everything felt like I was getting my full course, my full meal. And so it was very, um, I love that. And so the ones that I've done so far, I think I probably made it up to maybe, I don't know, week seven or eight. So <laughs> I'm, I got some work to do. Um, but as soon as I move and get settled in a new space, I'm going back in, I'm diving back in. So, and then the community around it was really amazing and awesome and supportive. And I don't know, whatever you all did, keep doing it. It was a great experience, a great community. Um, and I'm looking forward to the next one. So when is the next one? When does it start? Um, registration opens January 1st okay. and the class begins February 1st and it's shorter this time. It's three months rather than six. Okay. So March 30th is the end of mm -hmm. the class. Mm -hmm. 
um, but it'll still be open for a year. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah, videos, you can download all the videos, all the PDFs. Yeah. That's yours to have. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. So those of you listening and watching, I, I think I'm pretty sure I saw the teacher list is already out of who's going mm -hmm. to be teaching. Yeah. So go check it out. Um, and yeah, go ahead and start saving your Christmas money for soul, <laughs> soul food. Um, and I'll see you in there because I'll be in there. Um, all right. So then let's talk a um, couple things before we go. I want to know, you talked about canvas art, and then we obviously know you art journal. Is there any other kind of art that you do? Um, I sing. <laughs> that, I love yeah. it. <laughs> um, and as far as visual art, I like from time to time to mess around with clay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's another thing that I like. Okay. And not like throwing clay, but just like Sculpey uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and air dry clay. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So can you show us before we go, can we see some of your art journals or your canvas or any work you want to share with us? Okay, I could, I'll, little, little, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I will give you a sneak peek at um, what I'll be sharing on howtoartjournal.com. Um, I had a blast working on this, if I can find it. Let's see. So I'll do it really quickly because it's just sneak peek. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the art journal. And then I just, I'll share some little paintings mm. yeah. are those coasters yes they are they're from the Michaels dollar bin <laughs> oh wow and are they actual like are, are do they have a coat like because I could I actually sit my drink on it no okay. but that's a good idea hmm maybe I should paint some and laminate them so they yeah. can be used as coasters yeah, yeah yeah that'd be cool um this is one of my favorites it's mm. a little different but I I'm leaning more and more and more towards um, less detailed figures and more of an abstract feel. Yeah. So I'm kind of letting myself grow yeah. in that way. Even though my brain keeps saying, add more, add more. <laughs> so I keep learning to let go. Yes, yeah. Uh, let's see. This oh, is nice. picture frame. Oh, I love that. So this actually, um, I was thinking about... One of the things I'm passionate about is um, this growing multi-ethnic society that we have mm -hmm. and the changing face of America. Mm -hmm. And with all the stuff that happened with Ferguson, mm -hmm. um, yep. not about the case because we still don't know the facts of the case. Right. But the heart of people that, you know, there's still a lot of junk going on. And so this is called Reach Out. Mm, and I, I just am so passionate about people realizing that we can change things yes. one relationship at a time. All we have to do is step outside of ourselves yes. and be willing to see life from another perspective. You know, it's yep. really simple, but we make it so complicated. We do make it complicated. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, and I... <clears throat> So that frame, is that something you sell in your store, like in your Etsy store, or is it? Yeah, yeah. I just sealed a bunch of paintings yesterday, and I'll be doing a shop update actually later today. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. awesome. So, we'll make yeah. sure folks have the link for that um, okay. and that they can find that. So, yeah, no, I love um, this idea of, like you said, life inspires your art, and what's happening in the world mm -hmm. um, inspires your art. So that's, that's amazing and beautiful. Mistel, I can't tell you how honored. I, I said it in the beginning, but literally, so everybody who's watching, yes, I am gushing because I, <laughs> <laughs> this is like a dream come true um, for me to be able to have a conversation with you. So the next thing for me will be to actually be in person and give you a hug. Um, yay! That will be, <laughs> yay! That would be wonderful. <laughs> that will be. I, I'm, I was almost in Chicago this coming this past year, and the trip ended up not happening. But as soon as it was on my radar, I was like, okay, as soon as the plane tickets are bought, I'm going to email her and just say, I would love to take you out for lunch. And But Whoa. then we, the, the trip didn't happen, so we didn't end up coming. But if I'm ever in your neck of the woods, trust Whoa. that I will be contacting you so that I can meet you in person. Wow. 
just so you know, I have a brother who lives in California, what? and he's married next year. <laughs> this time next year, October of next year. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'll be thinking yeah. about that. I'll be keeping that okay. in, in my mind. All right. So, thank you again so much. I'm looking forward to um, your blog posts and to that, whatever I just saw, the little sneak peek. I'm looking yeah. forward to that. <laughs> and I'm sure other people are too. So, thank you. Thank you so much for showing up in the world the way that you do and for inspiring those of us that are introverts, people who are shy, um, and those of us who are beginners and still trying to find our own voice and our own style. So thank you. Thank you. Okay.